Welcome back to FT Markets. With the global economy finally recovering, interest rates were bound to rise this year. Or were they? What's actually happened so far this year is that yields on government bonds, which move inversely with prices, have actually fallen in the US and in Europe. This is significant because government bond yields are the benchmark against which all sorts of market interest rates are priced. Last week, the European Central Bank gave European interest rates, European yields, a further nudge downwards by hinting it may embark on quantitative easing or large-scale asset purchases. But is it just a temporary move? Will rates start to rise again? Or could they fall even further? With me to discuss this is Stephen Major, who is the Head of Fixed Income Research at HSBC. Welcome, Steve. You've taken quite a controversial position on this because you're arguing government bond yields could fall even further. Why is that? Well, yes, our forecasts are that market rates will fall further. So I'm thinking here about 10-year benchmark yields. and U.S. Treasuries. U.S. Treasuries to start with. And, and the argument goes like this, that it's a question of what level of yield can the economy take before it slows down or, in fact, even speeds up, rather than trying to forecast what level of yield you get from your economic forecast. Uh, because central banks including in the US, are still trying to stimulate economies. Well, yes, and, and I think that there's an argument to say that last year we had an effective tightening of monetary conditions. Let's look at our first chart, which I think you uh, think would argue, illustrates yeah. this point. Tell us what's going on here. Well, the, the red line is the Fed funds rate. That's so the policy rate. If you focus just on the policy rate and the Fed's balance sheet, you'd say they're ultra loose. Um, yeah. And how could rates possibly go anywhere? But yeah, up. they're on the floor. Well, the, the blue one is the five-year rate starting in five years' time. All right. We call it the five-year, five-year forward. And this is a good proxy for longer-term rates. Most households, corporates, and indeed the government are benchmarked on longer-term rates. That's the rate you pay yeah. for your mortgage, right? And that's significantly higher. And it's much higher. At the start of the year, it was at 4.5%. Now, if the US Fed is forecasting longer term nominal GDP of 4.3, I would suggest having an interest rate above that, it's quite restrictive. It's actually tightening, yeah. it's actually breaking the economy. Yeah, so if, as much as they like to say that tapering wasn't tightening, uh, it was. <laughs> but I thought the US economy is picking up, it's gathering pay, so surely well, that. The first quarter wasn't so good. For, for the first quarter is definitely below the trend required to hit the target for this year. And currently they're talking about 28 to 3% GDP growth this year. And it, they're not on track for that. And if um, rates in the US um, could fall even further, what does that mean for the rest of the world? Well, you know that market rates are linked. And especially when we have zero bound policy rates just about everywhere in the developed world, it means that the hedging costs are next to zero. So uh, banks and asset managers will move quite quickly between different G3, G4 rates markets. So if the US, US bond yield is going down, it affects the relative value compared to bunds, gilts and JGBs. Yes, yeah, we don't have a chart of no. German bunds, but actually they've fallen even further. Than, yes, well, in, in the spreads have widened yeah. against the US. In the Eurozone, it's, it's not just about the, the rate expectations, because for the Bund being the benchmark for a bunch of uh, credit markets, because uh, really the Spanish and Italian markets are much more creditized, uh, therefore you get different factors driving the Bund yield. Okay, let's turn to the Eurozone specifically, because as I mentioned, we had this hint from Mario Draghi, the ECB president, about possible quantitative easing. Quantitative easing in the Eurozone um, should lower interest rates, but actually not that easy. Um, mm. You brought your chart here. Um, tell us what's this showing and what does quantitative easing mean for Eurozone yields and the spread against mm. the Fed? Well, the point of, the showing, treasuries. The point of showing this, Ralph, is, is to suggest that there's a risk that, yes, the Bund yield might fall with, with Eurozone German, yeah. QE. So German yeah. Bund's, yeah. Bund yields could be lower, uh, but not necessarily the Italian yield. And, and that's a question of size of market compared to what they might buy. Because actually the government bond market is quite small compared to its yeah. shareholding in the ECB. And there's two things we know about QE. One is buy the rumour, sell the fact. In yeah. other words, it all happens before they start, which is what's going on now. Yeah, we might have seen the effect. Seen and the second one is watch out for the unintended consequences. Now, by definition, I don't know what they are, but we know that with the UK and US, there were distortions to housing markets, emerging markets. 
maybe in the Eurozone the periphery doesn't do so well out of this. The suggestion is that the ECB might actually buy private sector assets, bank loans for instance, yeah. rather than government bonds. Would that drive interest rates lower? That's why they're looking at a much wider range of instruments and policy choices because they, they're they aware of the risks of this and also to get to the root of the problem they need to get money into the private sector especially in the periphery. Okay Steve thank you very much so a quick roundup of the global picture then lower yields um, possibly even in the US on the back of weaker than expected growth but maybe we've seen as much as we're going to see in the eurozone.